What's going on YouTube? Today we're taking a look at probably one of my favorite Shiro production knives that they make. Uh, this is the F95T and T is for uh, turtle, I guess, or tortoise or tortois, whatever you want to, uh, whatever language you're in, it basically looks like a turtle shell, as you can see by the milling. So we're gonna talk about this knife. We're gonna compare it with uh, some other Shiro's and uh, kind of just have a quick conversation in a little bit of detail uh, or as much detail as you want to listen to and um, yeah we're just going to talk about a knife talk a little bit about some of the details that it uh, that it has and kind of compare it with some of the other models so let's kind of get started on this guy so as we know sheer gore off should uh, should be pretty obvious they are from russia they're russian made um, super, super popular. Um, actually, that was the first flip open of this knife. It's, so just be aware this one has not, just got it out of the box today. Uh, so nothing's broken in on it. But uh, as I was saying, so Shirogorov is uh, a Russian production knife manufacturer. Uh, they also do some custom divisions, which is where one person will actually make a knife. And they also do uh, full custom versions where uh, Sergei himself is building a knife start to finish and my understanding is some of these knives that he makes um, you know they'll they'll take him for a batch uh, some of them will take a month so um, and those guys go for four or five grand uh, on the lottery market and then uh, on the used market uh, much higher so um, custom divisions they're definitely a different knife as well they do make a CD or, or custom division of the turtle and uh, that one, uh, I want to say, is probably in the $4,000 US conversation secondary market. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to find them this year, but they're going to get snapped up because this is a very, very popular blade. And rightfully so. So let's, uh, let's kind of get started. Let's talk about this. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a casual conversation. I don't want to scare anyone off. If I do make mistakes on anything, I encourage you to leave a comment and correct it so that I can uh, adjust it and make note uh, for the next one. I'm not necessarily an expert. I do know a little bit about this, but uh, you know, I'm certainly not uh, quitting my day job to do this right now. So, okay. So this is it. Um, this is the turtle. Let's uh, do a couple quick measurements. So F95, 95 meaning the blade length should be 95 mils. So let's measure that up uh, in inches. Well, I can kind of go either way here, but in inches, uh, about four inches. And uh, yeah, 95, there you go. On the nose, overall length of this guy is uh, eight and three quarter or a hair under perhaps, right in that conversation. Um, comparison wise on the 95, you know, it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of comparisons that we can talk about. You know, it does have the, uh, 95 zero, which is a great knife. Love that knife. Um, that would be this guy here. So as you can kind of see, um, very comparable knife. And one of the things that I'd like to kind of discuss and mention is that, um, these knives, although they share the same 95 model family, they're two very different knives. They have the same blade length. Um, they're not the same width. They don't have the same blade stock. They don't have the same jimping. As you can see, two absolutely different knives. Look at the width and the handle. Look at the back spacer. Absolutely very different knives. Um, even the cut on the blade itself. If you want to roll and look at those, they're very different. So I encourage you, uh, if you can, um, take a look at both in hand and see which one you like more. Um, my experience is they're both great. Um, the 95-0 is a little bit heavier and uh, thicker in hand to make room for that bigger blade. But uh, nonetheless, we'll continue. Uh, so next in line, we would compare it with the Quantum. This is the Gen 2. And super, super awesome knife on this guy. Also 95 mil blade. More of a dressy knife, I'd say, than if you look at the profile of, uh, of the other two, I would say. Um, one thing I will point at as well, 
on the zero, or, or sorry, the, uh, the two, if we look at the differences in where the flipper tab is, these are two important differences that I would kind of, uh, I always like to tell people when you are looking at the two. If you're looking at the location of the flipper tab, one is further back than the other, and that is on the, the 95. So if your hand's a little smaller, not by much, but if your hand's a little bit smaller, and uh, you do like the locked in feel a little better of the turtle, it certainly is a little bit different. So that is something to discuss. I don't know how important that is to you, but uh, you know, when you are putting your hand on the, the quantum, you tend to run your hand down the front of it to get to that tab before ultimately it, uh, it fires out, right? And it also has that uh, the cutout for the tab behind it, just like the 95 does, as you can see. But uh, it's just the tab's a little further up, that's all. Whereas this, you can kind of get a little nest behind the tab before it shoots out. So, beautiful knife, absolutely beautiful knife. Now if we compare that into the family of Shiro, so I, I showed you the Quantum. I can get rid of the, uh, the zero here on the 95. Uh, so we compared it to the Quantum. Uh, we can compare it with the Neon Zero, which is uh, another terrific blade, which is kind of their small, right? Uh, people, people, this is the one thing that kind of bothers me about this, is that people often, they look at the Neon and they go, oh, it's, it's Shiro's small knife. Um, it's not really. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll have a couple comparisons here in the Chris Reeves world. Some bug outs, and uh, I think I have a bug out here, and uh, kind of make some comparisons that way. One of the new ones for me, and I'll have a video on this here soon, is actually this beautiful guy here. That is right between the two. So this is the Stellaris. And if we look at these, um, you know, we would compare this with uh, the Stellar, which is the aluminum handled version. Uh, two different knives, once again, um, just in the profile. But... Um, you can kind of see that we have all three sizes here. And then on the upper end of this, we would also have the 111 or the 111, which would be a 111 mil blade length, which is just a little bit bigger. But one thing that uh, Shiro does super, super well um, is the blade, the blade size fits into the handle uber, uber well. So when we're looking at some of these, you can see they make great use of tucking that blade into the handle. And that's not just on the custom division line, it's across the entire line. And we're gonna stick in this world here. Um, so, close this guy down here. If we're looking at the, uh, the Neon Zero, look at how close that blade fits into the handle. Now we obviously have the backspacer here and it's designed to stick out a little bit to fit that blade. Okay, now if we compare the Neon Zero with uh, a standard Neon, which I also have here, they use the three prongs uh, to make that same fit. Hopefully you can see that. But um, don't be afraid by the size of these blades on paper. They look bigger than they are, and they certainly are not. Uh, they're very thin carry profiles. And... Um, I can show you that again on, do I have a quantum with the, here's a quantum, so the, the 95 mil uh, backspacer as well. They use that th triple prong just to make the comparison between the 95 turtle and the quantum. But uh, you can see the tolerances here, guys. This is a four inch bladed knife that a lot of people will think um, you know, is as big as like an Adamus or something. And, and I'm, I'm confident in recommending that this is not, it does not feel like a four inch knife. It does not feel like an eight and three quarter inch carry. It's thin. If you look at the profile on it, it's very, very thin. It's contoured. Um, the other thing, you know what, I'm going to have to keep this other, uh, F95 zero up here to kind of talk about because there's a lot to talk about here. I could do a whole video comparing these two. Um, so 
When we talk profile on this, okay, um, we can see obviously stone washed on actually both of these handles and uh, they've done some milling on top and milling's just, uh, you know, uh, super simple, but it hides the detail so well. So when you do a stone wash and you kind of change the color inside the milling like that, what you end up have or having is that as this knife wears in over time, it's just going to kind of affect the top layer of that milling. And it's not necessarily going to kind of wear into the bottom. So that uh, turtle shell that's on here is always going to have that turtle shell look on it as, as you wear it in over time in your pocket, in and out, in and out, etc. of your jeans, of your, you could even use actually with like dress pants or something. It would be, make a great kind of carry in that regard as well. But uh, it's going to hide that color. It's going to protect it just from the raised surfaces because remember that, that detail is deeper down on the milling, that color change, which looks fantastic. So another thing on this, uh, on this beautiful knife that we'll talk about in that in the carry profile compared to the F950. Um, so on paper, they look very similar as I discussed. But when you actually kind of dig deeper, so when you are removing surface milling like this on top here, it's actually going to fit your hand a little bit thinner all around when you're carrying it. That's going to be something that you're not even going to notice. Whereas the 95-0, there's no milling on the handle. None. So what that means is because of the, the thicker blade stock as well, the handles are a little further, the scales are further apart. Um, essentially what's going to end up happening here is that it feels like a bigger knife in your hand when you are carrying it. And I certainly noticed that, uh, you know, for guys with bigger hands, I would say, you know, hold both, but the 95-0 is certainly going to be one that fits your hand a little wider, right? And Shiro's fit, fit pretty thin to begin with, but this one between the two certainly has a bigger fit in hand. So like I said, you remove the material on top, you're, you're thinning out the scales, and that way it fits your hand a little bit thinner. Boy, those multi-row bearings just hammered that thing out. So this thing's been flipped, um, I don't know, maybe, well, you've watched every one of them, so I'm sure someone can point me in five times or whatever. But um, that is totally, totally cool. They have not worn in whatsoever, which is hilarious. I will say this as well. Uh, Multi-row bearing versus single row bearing. So if we compare this uh, this guy with I don't have a I don't have a 95 with single row bearings on it. I do have this Quantum here, which is the standard Quantum single row bearings. And uh, some people some people really like single row bearings. Other people they uh, they talk they go oh, I must have multi-row or I must have uh, or I gotta have uh, roller bearings. I really like single row bearings. They're like less friction and they feel great. They wear in super quick compared to the multi-row, require less, uh, less lube, I suppose. And they're just, they're just easy. They're cheaper. They're, it's a great, uh, I really like this knife. I really, really like this knife. And if I was suggesting people on a knife to jump into the brand, uh, that's the one I would suggest, like any day of the week. So with the bearings themselves, they do come multi-row bearing, which is awesome. Um, but I'll say out of the box, they, uh, they definitely need some break-in time. Now, some people will tell you, oh, single row bearing, uh, you know, it's, it's smoother, it's easier, it's shorter break-in, multi-row bearings, they feel drier. I'm telling you, flip either for, you know, a hundred times and uh, before you know it, they're gonna feel just fine without any issues. Uh, and that's across the board for just about all the Shiro's. Um, blade material has a bit of a factor in that as well. Um, just based on kind of how it wears in itself, how hard the blade is, that's a different conversation. But in terms of single row versus multi-row, um, you know, obviously both of these are multi-row and then the, da, 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 the one I was talking about earlier there, that was the single row. Um, I like single row, don't have a problem with it. Most of the knives that you get on the market that have bearings in them are single row bearings. And if you think of it as 
uh, balls inside a track in a circle, that's your single row. If you think about multi-row, it's kind of like a circle, uh, like a pinwheel that goes out in like, a, like, like sun rays. It's a pinwheel, three bearings in a line kind of thing. And then up from there, it's like roller bearings. And that's like, think of it as like, um, like a hot dog on a hot dog roller-ish kind of thing in a, in a circle. Real technical, I know, and I, I apologize about that. But um, anyway, we'll, we'll get off the topic of that and start showing you some more details of this. Um, so fit and finish is tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. Ergonomics fit the hand real, real well. Uh, really, really love the ergonomics of this. And uh, it's definitely something that uh, you need to hold to kind of feel the sheer Goroff feel. So yeah, the ergos, uh, the ergos are terrific. Absolutely terrific. No issues with it. And for anyone who uh, hasn't kind of held a sheer Goroff, they definitely need to, you know, put one in your hand, see the fit, the feel, the finish, see the jimping, you know, like the jimping on these is just absolutely nuts. I absolutely love it. It's super thin, you know, the blade, which I don't even know if I've mentioned that, it's an M390 blade. And the camera's just going crazy right now. I don't know what's going on. But as you can see, M390 on that blade, which is awesome. Uh, so it's gonna have good edge retention. It's gonna be durable. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be worrying too much about this knife over time. Uh, I'd say M390 is kind of like the gold standard, really, um, with a lot of current blades, uh, depending on the heat treat, obviously. But I think this one's got M390 on it as well. Yep, so super cool. Uh, what else can we kind of talk about with this guy? Um, in this long-winded conversation that's not really a review. Um, so one of the other things that kind of set these guys apart is the fact that they have this backspacer. And remember earlier I was showing you um, that one, uh, the quantum there with the triple prong back. So when you start getting into the different blade levels of, uh, of Shira Goroff, uh, so when you go from Chromax up to M390, they also tend to start throwing backspacers on here. And I can't really think of too many cases that um, they upgrade the blade steel, but don't put the backspacer on their production line. If there's one that comes to mind, please let me know below, but I don't think I have seen one. Um, M390, even on the Zero Neon, I think is M390. Um, yeah, even on this guy, they did the backspacer. So um, it's, it's a conversation worth having, but you know, in terms of the, the couple different backspacers here um, between the knives, uh, you know, obviously because this guy is bigger, right? The, the width of the blade of the stock is thicker. So, uh, you know, you're going to have to have a bigger backspacer. And, and between the two, what I love about these is they kind of match the blade jimping to the backspacer, which I just think looks so cool. Um, if we look, here's the zero. So you can see kind of the distance. It's not a, an, an identical match, but it's certainly, you know, it's just thicker. So on the blade jimping, they've gone a little bit thicker, which is cool. It's just a, it's a nice little touch. Let's see if that'll actually stay. And then on the turtle, let's crack this guy open. You can see it's more of a fine, let's talk look at the blade first. It's more of a fine jimping, as you can kind of see. Uh, so on the backspacer, lo and behold, they do like some fine kind of grip, which it looks real nice. Uh, between the two, you know, is there a real difference? Not really. They're both usable. They're both not going to give you any problems. They both feel great in hand. Like I said, the, uh, the fit on these guys is just absolutely incredible. The level of details through the roof. Um, to me, they're the best production knives in the world right now. Um, I, I can't think of anything that really competes with it. There's a few trying, but on the scale of things that they do, these are absolutely terrific. Now we do have an additional uh, lock bar metal on the, uh, or additional metal on the lock bar interface here, which is cool. So that over time, you know, as this uh, wears in, or uh, as you're using the knife over the years, you're gonna be able to uh, replace that through service, if that becomes a problem. Uh, I, I personally don't know too many people who are gonna be using this knife so much so 
that they're going to need to replace that metal lock bar, but it is cool uh, to have that option. I, I just think it looks real good to have that feature as well. Um, on the inside of this, now I'm going to grab a second light. It's going to be hard to show, but if we look on the inside of this, and the camera doesn't like to focus too much with this light, but uh, anyway, on the inside of this, we've got a lot of machining done as well. So hopefully the camera can kind of just give you some outlines. It's not, it's hard to show. It's just so narrow, but you can see some uh, shadows and whatnot on the inside. Um, without taking the knife apart and showing you the inside of this, I'm telling you, the inside's incredible. It's almost as nice as the outside of the knife. It's very, very well done. And uh, definitely one of the reasons that uh, a lot of people like these knives, man. Like, the, the level of detail is just uh, through the roof. And it's so hard to show without actually putting one in your hand, feeling the materials, like feeling the drop shuttiness of this, just, oh, it's just nuts. It's just, I, I can't even describe it. Like you, you guys, you need to try one out and, uh, and kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, another thing that we will also discuss is the pocket clip. We haven't talked about that yet. So let's take a look. Now on this pocket clip, as you can see, there's a lot going on. It is machined. It is not uh, stamped, it's well made, it's extremely well made. It looks absolutely terrific. It maintains the pattern of the actual turtle shell as well. Now, one of the things that you can immediately pick up on here that I'm kind of confused about is how, you know, they've done, how can I say this? If we look at like the brown FSD, for example, they've maintained the pattern on the pocket clip here and they've they've kept it in line. Okay, can we all see that? I feel like a, a teacher right now, but uh, you can see how the pattern remains the same and if you blurred your eyes, you can almost not tell there's a pocket clip there. If we look at the F95T, I'm kind of wondering why they didn't go that route too. They did a little bit of machine work on the top of it here, which looks great, you know, and they finish it just like the rest of the knife, but it's not necessarily really in line with the rest of the knife. Um, I wonder why they did that. I'm sure there's a reason for it. Maybe it's, um, you know, maybe it'd be too busy back here. Maybe it would look silly. I'm sure like anything, there will be a reason for it. This is not a knife they threw together and just like, you know, on a, on a whim, it's like, oh, let's just do it this way. That's that's not how Shirogorov does their stuff. This is, they release a new knife, I'm buying it. It's, uh, you know it's going to be done very, very well. So the pocket clip looks great. It's certainly, uh, you know, it's certainly machined well. Uh, another thing that I really dig about it as well is on the actual lock bar, it's going to be hard to show this, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, if you look at how the angling is on the pocket clip itself, you can see that uh, there, right there in the middle. Look underneath it, and there's a little bit of uh, bowing, or there's a, there's a touch point, you should say. That's touching this side of the knife. So what that means is that when, when you're holding the knife in your hand and you're putting pressure on that pocket clip, it's not gonna interfere with the lock bar and putting additional pressure on the blade. So let's, 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 I'll show you what I'm saying here. So if I'm flicking this open, just like on all the Shira Groffs, and I, I would say this is not exclusive to the F95, this is on the Neon, it's on the Quantum. Um, and you know what, maybe that might be a good little thing to show before I actually go demo it myself. You can see that they've done this on all kinds of them including the neon, even on the other tiers of neon, they've maintained this entire system so that when you push on that clip, it's angled and pushes onto the lock bar, which is such a cool feature. And it is one that um, some attempt to do, some do really, really well, and others don't do at all and it frustrates the living uh, bejeebus out of me. So I'll show that. 
okay? So when you're firing this guy out, okay, it's in your hand, you're squeezing it. Remember, uh, you, you know, people tend to hold their knives like it's, uh, like it's a brass knuckle. So it's in your hand, you're like, hey, I wanna, I wanna fire this guy out. So what do you do? You put your finger on the tip and your other fingers tend to, to rest on the back here like that. Okay, am I showing that okay? They tend to rest on the back and where do they rest on? They rest on the pocket clip. So when you're, when you're holding this like this, when you're putting pressure on the pocket clip, you're applying that pressure away from the lock bar. Now, whether if you're literally holding to the point where you're like pushing it down on the lock bar, yeah, you're gonna, it's not gonna fire out. And what I'll do is I'll kind of just squeeze the lock bar there between my two fingers like this, right? And, or I'll change fingers. So middle finger on the lock bar, thumb on this side, and I'll try to fire it out. It doesn't like, it doesn't want to, right? That's the whole point. It's, it's keeping it in place. Whereas if you're holding it and you're squeezing the pocket clip, right? Fingers are, three fingers are on it, comes out no problem. That's the beauty of that design. And it's something that I just go, it's so simple, it's done so well, um, and they've executed it the way it should. And you just don't have any problems. The shear go off drop, obviously, on that blade. I like to, on some knives, I'll actually, and this will show you the angle of the camera, I'll set this up at a 90 degree angle and you can kind of just push the blade and see where it'll actually fall. A sure Gorf won't fall. <laughs> it will not fall on its own. It will sit there and be totally content to sit there at 65 degrees, right? Let's put it even more. It will sit there and not fall. It is controlled. And even after you break them in, it won't do that. And that is across all of them, single row bearing, multi row bearing, roller bearing, whatever. It's just, it's not stuck there, guys. It, like look, look at the difference. I didn't touch it. It's just controlled. That's what I love about this thing. It's controlled. It's designed so well that uh, it, you don't, you don't have to worry about those little things, which is awesome. I'm gonna fire this guy a few times uh, just to get you some sound, some audio. Uh, if you do want to hear it, great. Hopefully that sounds nice. I do have a microphone right next to it. So that, uh, that should give you a good idea of the sound. If you're into that sort of thing. I know some people really like to hear that. But um, anyway, so we've talked about the pocket clip. We've talked about the blade steel being M390. We've talked about uh, the backspacer, which is well designed, love it. Uh, all the hardware on this, I believe is stainless steel or steel as well. I would assume stainless steel. Uh, which is a smart choice, and uh, I think it looks real nice. Very practical. Now, one of the things as well that I often forget is, yes, they are proprietary. Uh, this is proprietary hardware, okay? Um, now, one of the things that you will notice is that this proprietary hardware looks a lot like a screwdriver, flathead, and it is. Difference being, it's a little fatter, of a slot and your driver will slide out of this. So how should I say this? Um, don't use a screwdriver, okay? Use something softer. Remember it's steel, it's steel hardware. So if you, um, you know, one of the things I'll show you, I've used on Hinderer stuff in the past. I've got a, I'm Canadian, as you guys know. So I've got a penny. I'll use that penny and you can see how damaged it is um, just from, taking apart hinderers. Now I will have a video on the actual uh, the cyber tool here coming up at some point. I have, uh, I have ordered one of those to take, uh, take a look at it, possibly throw that in the store. A lot of people have been asking me about that. So I'll probably do a video on that and show uh, what that looks like. But um, yeah, you know what? If you don't want to invest the money in the tool to work on your own knife, uh, which I don't blame you, it's a pricey tool. Uh, you certainly can use like, uh, you know, a credit card or something, uh, you know, fold it over together, 
and tape it down and it'll work fine. You're not going to damage anything. You're not going to scratch the knife. Um, what's going to be interesting is these smaller pieces. Um, I don't know how you get in there and use something. You could probably use a penny. I just don't want to damage the knife. And look, I feel like talking about working on a knife when it's brand new is almost like talking about how when you start at a new company, here's how they fire you or here's your exit strategy. Like, look, this is brand new. You shouldn't need to work on the knife uh, at all. Um, but in rare circumstances, it certainly would be nice to have. You know, I'm sitting here. I've got about 15 Shiragoras beside me that, uh, that are up for grabs. And um, you know what? At some point, I'm going to need to work on one, and um, you know what? May as well use the right tool, because you're not going to damage the hardware, you're not going to damage the tool, and uh, you're not going to slip and scratch and do anything you shouldn't. It's going to be put back together the way it should with the right torque specs, and uh, it's just it's the right thing to do. Um, I talked about this little tab here, the flipper tab, and how it actually... Uh, it gives you room into the frame, so when you flick it back, right, let's take a look here. You can see where your finger goes, and that nice little cutout. I think that's a very smart idea. Um, makes a lot of sense. Just the overall milling and attention to detail, just all, everything's rounded. Uh, there's no sharp edges, there's no burrs. It's just a very well thought out design. The centering, I would imagine, with the looking, should be bang on. Just like all the Shiro's, yeah, bang, bang on. Uh, and then another thing here, we do have the ability to run a lanyard. It's kind of made into the actual backspacer here, right on the tip. I don't know if the camera's gonna zoom correctly there or not, but there is a spot, yeah, right there. You can throw a little bead on or, um, you know, some rope. Certainly do that, you know, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big lanyard guy or beads, but on the right knife, it certainly looks awesome and adds some functionality to it in your pocket. Easier to get out if you just don't want to tuck it in with that pocket clip. You certainly can, um, by all means. Um, we did talk about the actual uh, lock bar insert, which is great. So you're going to get lots and lots of time out of this guy over the years. Uh, talked about the hardware. Uh, and then, well, let's see here if I can show this. If we look at this little lock bar here, and I don't know if the camera's gonna show it, but as I turn the knife, pay attention to how much this top piece sticks out above this, okay? So I'm gonna turn it now. Do you see that? The camera's trying to fight, uh, fight some light color, and I'll be honest, uh, filming a flat machined knife that's like super metallic is not really good for uh, the camera's <laughs> ISO settings. Um, but let's take a look at that roll. See, so move that down. All I'm trying to show here is that this lock bar sticks out just a hair, which is perfect because when you put your finger on it, you notice that. You notice it right away. See that? So when you put your thumb on it, it's like you don't even have to try to push this thing open. It just does it. It just does it so well. It's just like, oh, da 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 da, fire it open. Yeah, everything's good. Oh, I want to close it. it. It's already hanging over the other side. You don't need to. You don't need to fight to find it uh, at all. And it is totally in line. Here's the other thing with the curvature of the rest of the of the flipper tab. Everything. It's like all totally just specced and put together so well. All the edges are rounded all the way around. As I was saying, no hot spots, no deep burring. The lock bar is bent perfectly. Lockup is at like 15%. Now, one thing I will say on this as well is that uh, a lot of people don't realize that it's a very light lockup, but uh, the angling on it, it makes it look a lot less of a lockup than it has. So I'm not going to sit here and spine whack. This one's going in the store for sale. Um, and uh, I, I would not do that to somebody else's knife. Uh, even just flicking it open, I feel bad about. But uh, I will obviously polish this one up. Feels terrific. Absolutely terrific. 
And uh, this one actually might have a little bit more broken in bearings because it, it'll have about a dozen or so flicks on it, which uh, I'm assuming was not going to be a problem. So it looks great. Uh, ergos, oh, the other thing I didn't talk about is the flipper tab uh, itself. You know what, let's take a look at that from the front. Really nice, good jimping on there. So that uh, the ergos, remember I was comparing them earlier to uh, the Quantum. Um, I like this one myself a little bit better because you're not finding the tab. It just naturally, your finger will fall in and you can just switch it real nice. No problems, nice and smooth. Uh, on the lock bar itself down here, you can see the tab, it'll hit your thumb before it closes. And uh, it's not gonna fall and drop shut on your finger just because that's the design of the Shergorov ecosystem itself. Really smooth, really controlled, very confident design. Really well done. Really dig it. Anyway guys, that uh, I will say, you know what, I'll save it for the end here. I was gonna compare it with a uh, Chris Reeves large. I apologize I didn't do that, but there you go. So it's a, it's a big blade. It's bigger than uh, it's bigger than uh, a large Sebenza, and then I'll throw a small Sebenza in there if I have one at my access, which is one here, as well to kind of give you a comparison of off-brand comparables. So it's a big knife, but at the same time, it's really not in hand. Once you hold it, you totally understand that uh, this is a large knife, and uh, some people would call it an extra large knife in other brands. But uh, Shergoroff makes knives bigger than this. And this is like their bread and butter. Absolute bread and butter. And it's done so well. And uh, it is uh, probably my favorite Shergoroff. I can, I can confidently say it's my favorite production Shergoroff um, for a number of reasons. It feels the most like the Custom Divisions. Multi-row bearings, great pocket clip, wicked design with the turtle shell, recognizable. Uh, timeless, great blade steel, excellent ergonomics, great backspacer, accessory capable. It's got a little bear there, which is awesome. Who doesn't like bears? Maybe that's why it's my appeal for living in Canada. <laughs> you know, they have bears in Russia. We have lots of bears. I could probably go outside and find a bear right now. So uh, there you go. That is the Shergorov F95T, one of my all-time favorites. Absolutely terrific knife, and uh, take a look at it. It's going to be in the store, and if you have any questions, hit me up. And uh, Otherwise, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and until next time, we'll catch you around. All right, guys? Cheers.